Hi, good morning, everybody. Welcome uh, our Cyber Sangha. So I, it has been quiet for some time. Um, not able to be on the Facebook Live. So, uh, so I'm very happy to to come back, able to be uh, restarting again the teachings on the Facebook Live. Um, so I hope everybody is doing well, all our Cyber Sangha community uh, around the world. Uh, regardless of uh, how often I'm able to do these teachings on a Facebook Live or not, but uh, we are all c connected to each other in our heart. Uh, so I want to uh, let everybody know that. Today, is uh, the topic is about letting go of guilt and freeing yourself from the cycle of self-punishment. So letting go of guilt and freeing yourself from the cycle of self-punishment. So that basically, I think it's kind of very important and very often so many people are very much stuck in, in the deep uh, feeling of guilt. And uh, this, uh, this feeling is something very deep and it's very much connected with the uh, identity, self-identity. It's not only uh, about action that what one did, but it has so much, so much to do with how we identify ourselves. So, so basically, I, I feel there is a very strong sense of connection between guilt and shame. Um, shame is very much the self-identity, the pain identity, that who, and uh, guilt is the action. And in the Buddhism, in the teachings, we talk about conduct. So conduct, the actions what took place from that pain identity, it's what we are feeling guilty of. So, so basically, uh, shame is like a source of the guilt, uh, the action. Shame is the self-identity or pain identity or not good, I'm not good enough, I'm not capable, uh, I'm not liked, I'm not loved, uh, I am not worthy. Uh, this deep sense of I, which is very much deep rooted uh, and uh, from that I what action happens in the past which we are guilty of so basically shame is like the source of the negative actions the pain actions and then we basically feel guilty of it so basically shame is giving birth to the guilt and guilt, it's feeding back to shame. So it's, it's really like the, the cycle of shame and guilt. It's what is continuously happening in our life very often. So either one has to be really trying to be conscious of the deep sense of shame that we are feeling or deep or very aware of deep sense of guilt that we are feeling in the end it is very much guilt and shame both are like a darkness they are they obscure our life the light in our life they block our path uh, they become obstacle in our journey and so the only way or the most important way to overcome this this deep uh, problem of shame and guilt is to bring the light of awareness in our life. So basically, I think you know, just first of all, just to recognize in one each one of us, just to trying to recognize in your life. 
to trying to really like trying to go deep inside uh, pain identity, who you are, who you feel you are, what what role you play in this moment in your life, who you are. That deep sense of I. Trying to kind of really like recognize that a little bit. Directly, not intellectually, experientially, directly, in current moment, this present moment, in the present situations in your life, regardless of it's a good, bad, challenging, easy, this moment in your life, the sense of I and the I who is feeling guilty. If we bring the light of awareness, if we recognize it, then only we are able to overcome these challenges. So that's, I think, one very important point. The second, I think, is a very important point also is that um, very often, why we get stuck in thinking about negative things, why we get so much stuck in something that so many years ago we did, you're no longer, in a way, the same person, but you are stuck with the old person, old pain identity. Why we cannot just move on with infinite possibility of goodness? So much potentiality, so much possibility, so much possibility to do good things to move on, to be kind, to be creative, to be kind, to be helpful, to be productive, to be to fully enjoying life with so much creativity and positivity. It's possible if we don't stuck back in one single action or some actions of the past. In Buddhism, in the teaching, we in the Tibetan tradition, in particular in the Buddhist tradition, we say Tob Shi Shakjang, the confession of four powers. In that practice, what is there? It says uh, it's really important to recognize something that you did not do right. Recognize means not the self punishing or self judgment or self criticism or in contrary, also not denial, ignoring, but recognition with the awareness. You, you realize, you recognize, you are aware of something, what happened. But it's, that awareness is not a self-punishment. That awareness is not a, a, a dark a, a guilt, dark feeling of guilty. That awareness is the light that which brings a possibility to transform, to shift, to change, to transcend that old action into new possibility or new life which you are living in current moment. So I think it's very important to, to, to be aware of it, not to ignore it, but not to get stuck in it, move on, move on with it. And one of the reasons, of course, we can see, maybe you might be saying, yes, yes, I get it, I get it, right? I get it. I wanted to. I wanted to move on. I don't want to look back and think again and again about it. But I can't. I'm not able. I do get stuck. Every week, every month, every couple of months, Every now and then, these thoughts comes back. Every now and then, I have reoccurring dreams, this comes back. So, it's not healed. I'm not gone beyond. It's not process. It's still there. The seeds are still there. Energy is still there. It's giving birth to my dreams. It's giving birth to my emotions and thought. It, it, 
it's impacting, it's influencing my current present moment. But I wish I can change. So the tip to that is, I, I very often I uh, advise people, I mean, at, at least for myself also, I tr what I try to do is engage your life every single day. Engage in a positive actions. So, if there is so much you see light in front of you, if you see so much possibility the life gives to you, if you see all the gifts that life has given to you, if you see all the friends there are there to help you, if you, have, if you see all the enlightened beings, guardians and angels, whoever you believe in, they are, they are there, here to support you. If you see all those things, if you, life, you see life, the infinite possibility, there is no reason to get stuck back in feeling guilty. Because only reason why you look back, or only reason why you look back into the past, only reason why you look back into the negative actions of the past, into the dark actions of the past, into the pain stories of the past, it's just because your present moment is not illuminated enough. You are feeling dark in this present moment. Your present moment is obscured. You don't see far away. You don't see wide enough. You don't see luminous enough. You don't see possibility enough. Therefore, it's very easy to just look back. I don't see anything now, here, this moment. You are tired. You are feeling helpless. You are feeling down, weak, then you are looking at yourself, self-criticism, then you are looking, you, you are just basically open, you become like a little bit more vulnerable in your situation in the current, present moment, and then your past pain attacks you, past thoughts, emotions, individual collective stories of samsara and pain becomes more alive to, to spoil your present moment. But if you are more present, more engaged in this moment, more engaged with the place where you are, more engaged with the moment you are in, more engaged with the people who are sitting right in front of you, who is talking to you, or who is listening to you, who is ready to connect with you, who wanted to be playful, who wanted to joke, who wanted to laugh, who wanted to connect, who is giving you opportunity to become alive, uh, bringing a liveliness in the present moment. These are gifts of the moment that everybody is, moment is giving you, place is giving you, people are giving you but you are turning away from all those things what present moment is giving to you and turning back in the past of some negative action. So in short, what I'm trying to say here is more engaging in the present moment, in the present situation, in the people you are sitting right in with, together with, connecting with them, engaging with them, talking with them, sharing with them, listening to them, very lively sense, then there is no reason to go back. So, not go back 
into the past pain story, it's a little bit engaged more in the present moment. So I just give a maybe a little little sense of pra little practices and exercise. As I'm, it's, it's not a very different uh, practice and exercise. What I'm telling always, I tell the same thing, because I think uh, a wisdom is one, medicine is one for this ignorance. It's a question about how, how, how and when we are able to recognize and apply and change our life or not. But even though when we are not able to recognize, the wisdom doesn't change, the message doesn't change, the practice doesn't change, we are just having a hard time to connecting with it. So the practice is rest. Let rest basically means letting go. Letting go it sounds maybe a little bit more effortful. Letting go, trying to let go, put effort. What's wrong with you? You're not able to let it go. Why are you holding on it? It seems like a kind of demanding effort. Letting go. Everybody is giving advice to each other. Letting go. Let it go. Let it go. A yogi who is meditating in the cave. There is no one who is creating conflict. There is no social media. There is no even social connection with everybody. You are alone living in the cave and meditating. Meditating to achieve enlightenment. Meditating to let go of grasping minds. Inher grasping minds. The letting go of ego, but then meditation itself becomes a cause of building an ego. Oh, I am meditating. I am meditating. I am great meditator. I am one who is able to go away from samsara, able to be alone in the cave. I, who is different, better than others who are stuck in the samsara, are not able to go up in the cave. So what happened to the yogi? Yogi is stuck in himself also. Able to be free from other people, but not free from oneself. Same way, in the Buddhism, sometimes epistemology is very important. People debate for years, 30, 30 years, 40 years, trying to prove emptiness, using all kind of logic, fancy logics. Sometimes all intellectual knowledge one acquires, one has accumulated, the titles that one has achieved, they become an obstacle. What one knows becomes an obstacle to let go of the self-grasping. This is a human challenge. So much logic to prove the pillar is empty, but the self becomes full occupying within oneself. Take it over. Outer phenomena are empty, but selflessness is very hard to recognize. Even sometimes many people even don't even try to look close enough to, to that self too busy looking at the vase and pillars and trees and mountains, trying to prove they are empty. That's, that's the trick of the self. Self is not something very easy to be recognized. The shame is very much like that. The guilt is very much like that. It's a deep, hidden thing. But if you're only genuinely interested is to, to go deep inside yourself, not outside yourself. Not using so much conceptual mind which will obscure, which will distance yourself from that truth. But trying to bring more awareness, more closer to yourself, to your current thoughts, current feelings, 
situations, moment to moment situations in your life. So, so, the, so anyway, I, I hope it's clear what I'm trying to say here is that uh, guilt and shame, they really like to feed each other. And in order to able to overcome from them is to bring the light of awareness, recognize them. And uh, some form of the exercises is rest. What does this mean? What does it, what it means to rest? <clears throat> All the pain engagement, social pain engagement that we're, that what we do in the world, in the in, in the business world with people, or family, friends, we get angry, we're trying to uh, destroy each other, or we want trying to negatively have bad thoughts about each other. These are, you're not destroying anybody, you're destroying yourself. You're not if, if impacting somebody negatively, you are ne impacting negatively yourself. So, it's not, outcome will not be good anyway. So what do you do is take a break from your own pain, identity, shame. Take a break from that sense of shame I'm not good. This is a little bit like energetic thing. I'm not good. I'm not good. I'm not good. I'm not worthy. I'm not capable. Uh, I cannot talk to them. They will not listen to me. I cannot do that. I'm not capable. I don't have the resources. <clears throat> All these voices or even subtler level of energy, some very subtle level of winds, to take a break from that, that is to deep, breathe deep. Breathe deep and rest. So disengage, basically disengage with a, uh, I'm not saying disengage forever, I'm saying disengage for a moment, a weekend, a week, a month. Disengage with the social media, disengage with uh, communicating too much, disengage with clarifying too much, disengage maybe trying to prove yourself too much. Just, just rest. Give a break to yourself. Everything will be fine. You're okay. Rest deep enough in that stillness. Rest deep enough in that silence. Rest deep enough in that openness. But use the breath to rest. Listen to the Salavya Mantra to rest. Feel that world is with you, supporting you, and rest. Feel everything will be fine. Everything is okay. Everything is good. We say Kuntu Zangpo, Samantha Badra. All good. We are just having a hard time to connect with, connecting with that goodness. Rest. Breathe deep. When you rest deep enough, a new space opens up. New sense of self opens up. New, as new door opens up. New possibility opens up. New ideas arises. Creative idea arises. Joyful action and inspiration, effortless happiness arises. then you engage 
what is coming from deeper place, more purer place, more clear place, higher place. Engage with those thoughts, feelings, ideas, emotions. Give a birth to them in a positive action. What I said earlier, every single day for a couple of hours to do something that is, that is deeply engaging for your heart, your soul. Joyful, playful, flexible. It's like a breath. It's a healing. It's a joy. It's also a helpful, it's a creative thing. Couple of hours every day. When you engage more and more with that, you see what you're producing is very helpful. What you're doing is very joyful. Where it's coming is very pure. It might be not related with your profession. It not, might, might be nothing to do with money, nothing to do with anything. And in a way, it should not have anything to do with anything, anybody, no agenda. It's, it's, just, it's just a pure arising of energy, a creative energy, a positive energy that you love so much. And you just engage and you're, used, you're getting used to engaging that with every day, more and more in your life. When you engage more and more in your life with these things, right action for right energy, right thoughts and emotion from right place where it's coming from, there is no reason to feel guilty. So the solution for guilty, overcome feeling of guilty, is make the present moment alive. Engaging, lively, Re ways to overcome the shame is to realize who you are by realizing shame is who you are not. And who you are not is the way you have been engaging too long is the time to realize who you are. But with the help of recognizing the shame is not who you are. That's not who you are. You are not that. You are more than that. You are much more capable of that. Trusting that. And not only just saying, not only just saying, I trust that, I trust that, but opening door to the possibility of arising of that new self, that which is free from the guilt, by resting deeper, So I hope this is clear, a little bit, little bit more clear. Generally, like this sense of, uh, in, in uh, Buddhist teachings, we say that every negative emotion is doorway to its antidote and its wisdom and higher realization. This is what in the teaching says, fear is the doorway to build the confidence. Like everything. So if you think about, look at the sense of guilt, guilt is your door. Shame, shame, it's your door. Nothing wrong and you don't criticize yourself feeling of shame. Shame is like a door for courage, door for new self, new realization, new experiences of yourself, new possibility in your life. Only if you are aware and transcend that, not when you are stuck and deny and distance from that feeling by creating some other stories blaming somebody else, addressing directly inward within you.
Shame is not a weakness. Shame is not only what it makes you feel disconnect, but this can be door to you, to your strength, your possibility, your true self, your potentiality. Because maybe there is a sense of vulnerability there, but the vulnerability is what you wanted to open to. Because that's the door. If you avoid the door, you cannot enter. If you value the door, you will go closer. If you go closer, you will get there. If you enter, you will arrive. But avoiding the door, you will never arrive. So some sense of shame is the door to courage and new transformation by being closer, by bringing the light of awareness to it. And then it will not feed the guilt. The cycle will be cut, it. the cycle can end. So I hope this, this makes a little sense. So, um, so what we wanted to do here is uh, that each one of us, whatever in our life, little feeling of guilt, shame that we're experiencing, it's we all collectively, it's a good, good way to uh, go inside, go, go in, go closer, go toward it, with the care, with the attention, accommodate it, host it in that sacred space that with that luminous awareness in order to clear that guilt and shame. So do that. So, so first recognize yourself, go closer, bring into a conscious, into awareness, host in that sacred space and illuminate it with awareness and feel that we are all supporting each other to end this cycle, move on with a new life, new, new, new beginning, and also feel the, the, the blessing and the power of the Salaviva Mantra. That's what the Salaviva Mantra means, a mantra of clear light and to help that.
Okay. So how is the meditation? So a little feedback will be wonderful. So uh, uh, was it clear a little bit this uh, how to let go of guilt and shame? And how was the meditation? Okay, just to maybe conclude a little bit here, it's um, every emotions are doorway to its antidote, its wisdom, and toward liberation. Very often we look at shame very, as a something negative, something weakness, or guilt, something very bad, painful. But but doing that does not help. So every emotion, thought, it's a doorway to its antidote and its wisdom. For example, like anger. You, you don't get angry to everybody. You only get angry when you care about something or somebody. So in the deep inside, there is a longing for connection, to connect and to love. But it just, it, it did not find its easy way, that's why we get angry. But if you recognize the deep inner intention of that, then you realize it's not the way to continuously get angry, but transform its face into a love and then find what anger was looking for. Because love will find it, anger will destroy it. Ignorance is the same thing. Whenever you, are, you doubt about something, in a way, doubt is like the door. If you acknowledge, if you recognize the value of doubt, doubting something is not necessarily bad. It's something good to bringing clarity. Because the doubt is the door to a clarity. But if you look at the doubt as something wrong, then it will not bring the clarity, it will not bring the light. Same way, feeling shame, feeling weak, is the doorway to becoming a strong. F feeling doubtful, fearful, is the way, doorway to become more confident. Only, again, it's important, only if you recognize that doubt, if you're interested, you recognize, you go closer to it, you explore it, you process it, you transform it, you transcend it, you go beyond it, and that doubt helps you to be free. That ignorance helps you to find wisdom. That shame found, find, I say, help you to find your who potentially who you are that that guilt helped you to be free from your past by recognizing your present power of your present in short make your day today very lively okay <laughs> make Today, very lively. Whatever you're planning to do today, just make it very lively. 
If you have a meeting, a next meeting with somebody for coffee, for tea, just make it that how lively, joyful, playful, fun is to have a coffee with somebody. Only if you are there, only if you are with them, only if you see them, only if you feel them, only if you listen to them, if, only if you hear them, only if you are able to, only able, able to communicate with them, then your present moment become alive. Then you have no reason to go back into the past. So many years. Why people go back so much to the past? It's just their present moment is not very alive. Like dead or dying, or conflicted, confused. But if you go back to the past, it doesn't mean that you should not go back to the past. If you go back to the past, go back to the past with the power of presence, with the power of awareness, the power of ability to connect. Then, what you see in the past does not make you feel bad. It makes you feel happy, makes you feel clear, makes you feel strong. Because how you see it, you're seeing through right place with the clear glasses of wisdom. You are seeing something. You are not obscure and you are not affected by obscure, conflicted, stuck feeling guilty feeling or pain it's a different way of visiting past but for now today make best today special day engaging lively okay so thank you very much and uh, i hope this was a little bit helpful at least my uh, intention to trying to do these facebook live is just no any other intention to then just to connect with all of you and just to share something that um, whatever will make it today one day better, more lively, more joyful, better perspective, and to feel this connection regardless of where we are, what time zone we are in, we are connected. These little faces on my phone screen to see all of you makes me happy. So I hope you feel the same. Thank you.